friends. You might wonder why we're outside today. Uh, but before we get into that, let me get started with, my name is Miss Lisa and I get to do all the story times at Worthington Park. Um, this is rather an unusual day, so I thought it'd be fun to do it outside because we're gonna be talking about gardening. Um, Earth Day is coming up this week and I thought one of the ways that I like to celebrate and enjoy our earth is by planting in my garden. So I thought I'd give you a little tour of my garden, show you some of the ways that we try to be a little bit more economically friendly. Um, that means help our earth a little bit. And then we'll read some stories. Are you ready? Fantastic. Here are some of my plants that we're starting. Um, sometimes plants don't like to be outside when it's cold, so you have to wait until it gets a little bit warmer, but you still need them to be getting a little bit bigger through the cold weather. So I have some of my tomato plants started, um, some of our strawberry plants, and oh, let's see, peppers and some other fun things like that. And then because we just have a really small little yard, we have um, some strawberries here that grow on the edge of our deck. All right, now coming down off of our deck, you can see we don't have much that's growing just yet, do we? We have some weeds that I need to deal with. Right here we have sugar snap peas. I'm so excited about those. And those will grow right on up this guy up to the top because they like extra space. When you do something like that, it's called vertical growing. So you'll see we have a lot of vertical space here because we don't have a very big yard. Vertical just means up and down. So I have planters in all of these where we can grow more things. All right, because we don't have a lot of space. What do you see inside of my planters? What is that? There's no green in there. It's just dirt or soil. This one down here has some greens because that's where we've started some of our lettuce. Yeah, so we have some lettuce going. We have some cold weather things that do really well, like lettuce. We have Swiss chard started and the sugar snap peas. We have another batch of sugar snap peas over here next to our grape vine because my kids really wanted a grape vine. Right, there's one more thing I wanted to show you while we're down here, and that's over here in our tree line. Sorry if I'm making you nauseous. I'm not very good at doing this. Over here in our tree line, we have our, do you know what that is? That's our compost bin. We're gonna talk a little bit more about compost later on. All right, while we're out here, I wanna secretly show you one of my daughters has a secret space out here. Can you tell what her habitat looks like? I'm gonna come down in the path. Look at this super cool house that she made. It has a roof and everything. Isn't that fun? All right, now I'm gonna go back up to the deck and we'll do some story. Did you enjoy the tour of my yard? My little backyard? I forgot to show you too, we have a rain barrel that helps collect water when it comes down from the sky. Our rain, like we talked about the water cycle last week, and we can use our rain barrel to water our plants this summer when it gets really hot, which is so fun. My kids love getting water out of the rain barrel, and they do that a lot without permission. I also didn't show you our mud kitchen. We have all sorts of stuff back here. But we live on a tiny little piece of property surrounded by a lot of other houses and other people. And you might be thinking, Miss Lisa, I don't have a garden. I don't have anywhere to grow, but it's still good for us to know how things grow. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today. All right. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about how we can do things, even if we just have a small space. Okay. It's a little windy out here. So I hope you can hear me when I play all this back. We'll see. Okay. Let's go ahead and start with one of my favorite stories about growing a garden. Oh, if you've met Lola with me, I love Lola, don't I? I play, read a lot of Lola books. I do, they're fantastic. So this is Lola, and Lola's gonna plant a garden in this book. This book is by Anna McQuinn, and it's illustrated by Rosalind Beardshaw. All right, and it's from Charles Bridge. That's the name of the publisher. So thank you, Charles Bridge, for letting us read one of your stories. Ready? Lola loves her book of garden poems. Her favorite poem is the one about Mary Mary. Lola wants to plant a garden. Mommy says there is room near the vegetables. Oh, so they already have a vegetable garden. That's fun. 
Lola gets books about gardens from the library. She chooses her favorite flowers from the books. Mommy makes a list. Part of the reason I love Lola is because, you know, I love libraries. Yeah, and so does Lola. They go to the garden store to buy seeds. Lola and Mommy make the garden. The seed packets mark where the flowers are planted. Lola will have to wait a long time for them to grow. You know what? This is the hardest part. It is. Because we have a garden and right now I showed you what's growing. There's hardly anything that I can see. But that doesn't mean the seeds aren't working. The seeds are working really hard. I just can't see them yet. Yeah, except for my lettuce and my sugar snap peas. They were growing, huh? All right. So waiting is not easy. It's hard to do. Lola makes her flat own flower book while she waits. Mommy types the Mary Mary poem and Lola glues it in. Look at that. She's adding some flowers and pictures of flowers. Lola makes a string of bells. She finds shells and old beads. She even makes a little Mary Mary. Do you know the rhyme Mary Mary quite contrary? I should have done that at the beginning. Here it is, ready? <gasps> Mary Mary quite contrary, how does your garden grow? With silver bells and cockle shells and pretty maids all in a row. All right, so there's her little Mary Mary that she wants to put in her garden. My kids have all sorts of decorations for our garden. We have some butterflies that we can put up and we plant a lot of marigolds because that helps keep the wild animals out. Um, and then we have, oh, lots of wind things for windy days like today. One day Lola sees tiny green shoots. <gasps> she pulls up weeds so the shoots can grow. Look at the shoots, do you see them? Oh, sorry, we're in the shade of something. See that little one? Weeding is a very important part of gardening. That's one of the harder parts too. Lola's flowers grow bigger. They open up to the sun. Oh, look at those giant flowers. We love to grow sunflowers, but they do take up a lot of space. They do. Daddy helps Lola hang her shiny bells. Lola finds Mary Mary a perfect spot. It is so special. Orla, Ben, and Ty are coming to see Lola's garden. Lola and Mommy make cupcakes. Lola wears her flower shirt and Mommy helps Lola with her hair. Look at how pretty she looks. Lola's friends love everything about her garden. They share the crunchy peas and sweet strawberries that Mommy grew. We love sugar snap peas here. Then Lola makes up a story about Mary Mary. What kind of garden do you think Lola will plant next? Do you make guesses? Mm. Oh, it says Lola Lola extraordinary. How does your garden grow? With flower seeds and shells and beads and happy friends all in a row. All right, good job. You did great with that story. I hope you liked it. I think it's a super fun one. Um, and it talks a little bit about what we have to do to help seeds grow, but it didn't talk a ton about that. So let's talk about that really fast. Do you know what seeds need to grow? What do you already know about? I'm getting one of those things right now. I'm getting sunshine. Now, am I going to turn that sunshine into all the vitamins I need? No, not yet. No, I can't do that. Um, but flowers use the sunshine into their um, into their leaves so then they start but before you even get to sunshine what else do they need what do you plant the flowers into or the seeds into Let's see. oh. what do I have over here I have what is that it's the soil that's right so you plant into the soil. Now soil is dirt. It is, but it's good dirt. So good dirt, soil, has a lot of vitamins that the flowers and plants need. But do you eat dirt? No, don't eat dirt. It's not great for your body. 
plants are able to turn that dirt into vitamins. So this is their vitamins. Yeah, they don't take a supplement or anything like that. This is their vitamin. All right, so plants use the dirt and they grow something down into there. I actually, this one has one hanging because if this one's getting ready to get into something bigger. What is that? Do you know what that is? That's a root. That's how the plants get the nutrients up into the plant so that they can grow. And once they've grown to this point, the leaves can, oh, can you see it at all? The leaves can use the sunshine and that helps them grow bigger too. Now what's one more thing that they need? They need soil, they need sunshine, they need water. That's right. That's a fun way to help with the garden. You can, you can help your family water your garden. Um, we have a spray bottle that we use so we don't drown the plants because sometimes we do that too. Um, and then we also, when they're little, little, we use the spray bottle. And then when they get a little bit bigger, we have watering cans for the kids and the kids love to help water the garden. So you might like to help do that too. It's a fun job. All right. So do it with permission. Though. So the plants need water, soil, and sunshine. They also need a lot of time. They take a long time to grow. Some plants are much faster than other plants, but they all do take some time. Mm -hmm. Bean sprouts are one of the fastest ones you can grow. You can try growing beans pretty quickly, um, and they don't, they're not super picky, so they usually do pretty well. So if you're thinking about just trying to grow one thing, I would try beans, or sugar snap peas are really good. Yeah, all right, so let's go ahead and do a little bit of a rhyme. Can you show me some dancing fingers? Oh, I need to wake mine up. Get some dancing fingers going. Ready? We're going to dance your fingers up and dance your fingers down. Dance your fingers to the sides and dance them all around. Dance them on your shoulders and dance them on your head. Dance them on your tummy and put them all to bed. Good job. All right, let's do our next story. Now, this one's a little bit on the longer side, but it's one of my favorites, and I absolutely love this illustrator. It's the author of this story too, so he did all the words and the pictures, but it's Kadir Nelson. And let's see, are you ready? I love this one. And this is a HarperCollins book. Thank you, HarperCollins. If you plant a tomato seed, a carrot seed, and a cabbage seed, In time, with love and care. Oh, look at how long they're waiting. Can you tell what's happening in the pictures? Oh, they're reading to their seeds. Isn't that so cute? And oh, they're getting rained on, but they're, that means the seeds are getting water and sunshine and time. And they already are in the dirt, aren't they? Tomato, carriage, carrots, and cabbage plants will grow. Oh, those look so yummy. Oh, that's making it hard for me to wait till summer. Uh-oh, what's happening? What do you think those birds are thinking? Mm, I think they're thinking that looks pretty yummy. Uh-oh, do the other animals look like they're gonna share? I think you're right. Oh, this page always makes me laugh because it always reminds me of my kids when they see them see when they hear them sneaking a snack. Yeah. The wind's picking up. I hope you can still hear. If you plant a seed of selfishness, oh no, the rabbit did not share, did he? Nope. In a very short time. It will grow and grow and grow. What's happened to their beautiful garden and all that food they grew? Oh no. Into a heap of trouble. But if you plant a seed of kindness, what did the mouse do? What did he decide to do with the last thing he had? He gave it to somebody. 
in almost no time at all. Wait a minute, they just flew away with it. What do you think is going to happen next? It will grow and grow. The fruits of kindness. Oh, sorry. The fruits of kindness will grow and grow and grow. Look at their garden. Gardening is always a little more fun with lots of people. Oh, look at that thing. Can you believe how big their garden got? And they are very, very sweet. Look at those fruits of kindness. They have a lot more food now, don't they? Yeah, because what did the birds drop? Do you know what the birds were dropping? Oh dear, Miss Lisa. Do you know what the birds were dropping here? They were dropping seeds. Now birds actually do drop seeds, but it's in a different way. They don't have baggies of seeds that you'll see them dropping. So we know that this story is a pretend way of looking at something that's real. If we're kind to others, it comes back and it's good for everybody. All right, you did a great job with that story too. Sorry if it got a little windy and hard to hear it in the middle there. All right, our next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go round and round the garden. So did you bring your belly button today? Do you have it with you? Oh, good, okay. Now you're gonna go around and around your belly button, round and round. All right, if you have your grown up with you and they're doing this with you, they can go around and around and tickle your belly too. Are you ready? Round and around the garden goes the teddy bear and we're gonna walk up and tickle under the chin. One step, two steps, tickle under there. Are you ticklish under there? A couple of my kids are. Let's try it again, ready? Round and around the garden goes the teddy bear. One step, two step, tickle under there. Good job. All right. We're also going to talk a little bit about an idea that we talked about a second ago, compost. Do you know what compost is? Do you? All right. So compost is when we take our food scraps and some other things that break down really well, like newspaper, leaves, things like that, and we put them all together and we give them time. And guess what they do? With time, they start to produce heat and the heat starts to break down the food and then it turns into soil. Just like we were talking about that our food needs soil to grow, we can make soil with the food that we didn't eat. Isn't that crazy? So I have an experiment that my kids started. Oh, let's see. All right. It's kind of hard to see, but we started our soil with coffee grounds because you know I have a problem there. And um, some paper towels that we had used. And let's see, what else is in here? Oh, apple cores. We have a couple apple cores in here and some grapes that are gone bad because we missed them in the fridge. All right, so what we did was we put them all in here. We poked a couple little holes so it could breathe. And then we marked a line where our pile started. So it was full all the way up to here when we started this. And we started it on the last week. And now the top of it is down to here on this one. So what we wanted to do was get to watch it break down and get lower and lower. And you can do one of these at home. That's actually one of my ideas for you this week is you can do one of these to see how compost works, which is pretty fun actually. It takes a long time though, so it's even slower than our rainbow experiment last week. But my kids have really enjoyed watching their compost break down. I don't know. We also have a big compost bin that we take our compost out to and that helps our compost break down because we have a lot of food scraps because we're a big family. All right. The other thing I want to talk to you about real fast, we'll talk about after this next book because this next book includes something that helps a lot with compost and helps our soil be good for plants to grow. Now you might see these out in the wild and you might get grossed out, but my kids love these things. Are you ready? This book is called Dig In. And this is about what we find in soil. It's by Cindy Jensen Elliott and Mary Peterson. 
and it's from Simon & Schuster. Are you ready? I dig in the dirt. And find, what is that? A worm! That's the thing my kids really enjoy. I dig in the dirt and find a worm. Worm wiggles. Oh, there he goes, down into the dirt. I dig in the dirt. Oh, sorry about that. And find a rock. Ooh, that's another thing my kids really like. Do you collect rocks? Sometimes mine do. Yeah. Rock sits. Oh no, now the worm can't get up there. I dig in the dirt and find a pill bug. Ooh. Those are not one of my favorite things, I'll be honest. I keep skipping pages. Pill bug curls. I dig in the dirt and find a seed. Seed waits. I dig in the dirt and find a spider. Ooh, and a burst of wind, apparently. Spider runs. I dig in the dirt and find a sprout. That's what happens after it has its roots down into the soil and the green starts to pop out of the top of the plant. That's called the sprout. So what I showed you earlier was a sprout or a seedling. Sometimes they're called that. <gasps> sprout grows. I dig in the dirt and find dirt. Dirt squishes. Then I water the dirt and find, oh, another favorite thing of my kids. Mud! Oh, squishy, squishy. Oh, I didn't show you our mud pit. We literally have a spot where my kids just make mud. It's so gross, but they love it. All right. Okay, so I need to go find my worms. All right, I have my lovely assistant, Ella, go and dig up some stuff out of the garden for me because I wanted to show you some worms. So she dug for a little while and got us all this dirt. And there's, and there's oh, there's one. I see him moving. Here, why don't we go ahead and get him out? Do any of you like to dig for worms? They're so good for our gardens. I just don't want to a have... A roly pulley got in here. Oh, we were just talking about pill bugs. Oh. Huh. Um, I just don't want to have dirty hands to show you my books. So, we're going to have Ella show you. Here's... Whoop, other side. There you go. See? That's one of our wormies. Worms are so fantastic for our garden. They dig in and they help create air. They help loosen up the soil. Um, which is fantastic for the roots to be able to grow. They also, as they're digging in, they help make the soil more nutritious. They give more vitamins into the soil. All right, thanks, Ella. You wanna put him back in? Yep. All right, we'll put him back out in the garden later today. Thanks for digging them up for me. She had like eight in here, but I'm glad that one felt like being in front of the camera. All right. You I'm can, a fancy worm. All right, you can go wash your hands. <laughs> okay, goodness. Let's do one more song, and then we'll talk about our last story. Are you ready? This one is one that I learned from Jim Gill, but it's a very, very, very old song. And it's been done lots of ways, and in lots of languages. And so in English, it doesn't rhyme. And that's okay. Rhyming is when it sounds the same at the end. Do you remember that? Okay. So we're going to sing this one. It's called May There Always Be Sunshine. And we're going to go ahead and sing it um, with a few things that are my favorite things. And then we could talk about some other things you could put into the song. Are you ready? All right. We're going to sing it with May there always be sunshine. 
May there always be blue skies. May there always be mamas. May there always be the world. Good job. Now, you can add in whatever you want. I think I'm going to add in some things because it's Earth Day, or Earth Day is this week. I'm going to add in some things that I love in the Earth, besides the sunshine and the blue skies, because, oh man, that sunshine feels good. Are you ready? May there always be soil. May there always be seedlings. May there always be wormies. May there always be the earth. Good job. So you can add in pretty much whatever you want, whatever your favorite things are. Maybe it's pizza, maybe it's puppies, uh, maybe it's digging in mud. I don't know. So you can sing that yourself with whatever you want to put into it. If you want, you can put it in the comments and tell me what you sang into the song. I would love to hear it. I am a little bit puffy today because I was crying with happiness with some of the notes that my friends sent me. I really love hearing that you're enjoying story times because right now I'm talking to my phone underneath my grill. Yeah, and it doesn't feel like story time. So I love getting to hear what you're working on and what you're doing. It means a lot to me. All right, let's do our last story, and then we'll talk about some of the things you can play with this week. All right, this one's one of my favorites. It's called Planting a Rainbow, and it's by Lois Ellert. It's a classic. You've probably seen this book. I certainly did not discover it. It's by Harcourt. That's the publisher. Every year, Mom and I plant a rainbow. In the fall, we buy some bulbs and plant them in the ground. Oh, they're very fancy. I'm not good at remembering to do bulbs. We usually start with seedlings. Bulbs are just bigger seeds and you plant them a little bit further down and then they grow every year, which is so much fun. I have a few irises, which is one of the ones over here. We order seeds from catalogs and wait all winter long. Ooh, I love starting to plant my garden in February. For spring to warm the soil and sprout the bulbs. So some bulbs sprout earlier in the spring than others because all plants like different temperatures. <laughs> then it's time to go to the garden center and select some seedlings. You can grow seedlings too, but some of them just do better when you buy them already grown for you from a greenhouse. We sow the seeds and set out plants in soil. That's a beautiful garden already. And watch the rainbow grow. That's the part that takes the longest, I tell you. And grow and grow. Look at that beautiful garden they've grown. We have some red flowers, carnations and roses and tulips. And what color? Orange flowers, like zinnia and tulip, tiger lily and poppies. And what color do we have now? Some yellow blooms, daisies, marigolds, daffodils. We grow something green, lots of green things that you can grow. These are ferns. And some blue flowers. I will say most blue flowers are not very, very blue. They're a little more purple. So these are cornflowers and hyacinth and delphiniums and morning glories. And some purple flowers too. There's irises, phlox, crocus, Violets, asters, and pansies. One of my favorite purple flowers I named my daughter after, Lily. All summer long, we pick them and bring them home. Look at all their beautiful flowers they have. And when summer is over, we know we can grow our rainbow again next year. All right. So that book was a little bit more about planting flowers than planting vegetables because she has another one called Growing Vegetable Soup 
that's about growing vegetables. We grow a lot of fruits and vegetables in our area. That's what we do because we don't have a lot of space. So we grow some flowers, but it's almost all fruits and veggies and it's mostly veggies because fruits don't grow super well in our little yard. Yep, we have our grapevine, but we've never been able to eat anything off of it. All right, that is all of my stories for today. I hope that you enjoyed them. I hope you could hear them. I haven't tried doing one of these outside, so we'll see what happens. I know I heard a helicopter at one point. I can hear a lot of the road noise because like I said, I live in a little place in a subdivision. All right, so I wanted to talk to you about some of my ideas for what you can do this week. If you'd like, I thought it might be fun if you wanted to try digging and see if you could find some worms too. Now, we of course name all of our wormies and then let them hang out with us for a little bit and we have some air holes poked in here, but we're not gonna keep them in here for very long because we want them in our garden, helping our garden to grow better. So we'll put these guys back in after my story time is over. But you can dig some up, see what you can see about the worms because they're very interesting animals. They are. You could also start a worm farm, but that's a bit more of a commitment. So you'll have to talk to your grown-ups about that. All right, the next thing that I thought you could do is you could try your very own version of our compost experiment. My kids all did it and we cut their stuff into different sizes to see um, what size would break down the fastest because we read that smaller pieces break down faster and turn into soil faster but we wanted to see it for ourselves so we chopped them up and put them in um, and they all just have stuff that we pulled out of our kitchen. All right, so I'm curious to see what happens with that. You are welcome to try it at home too. Um, I just wanted to see how long it takes for this much to break down uh, because it might help us know how long until our big composter that we just got starts to break down. So you can try making compost. You can try finding some worms. One of my other ideas is that you can try just drawing what your dream garden would look like and it doesn't have to be all serious stuff when we were talking about what we wanted to plant in our garden my daughter Lily said she wanted pizza seeds she wanted us to grow our own pizza well that doesn't work very well because pizza is not just one thing but I have seen where you can plant tomatoes and basil and onions and garlic and you can plant things that you would use in pizza all in one space and then call it your pizza garden um, but you can draw whatever you want let me see what your garden would look like if you had an imaginary world where you could have like a unicorn garden and things like that you should do it draw it out all right the last thing that I was gonna suggest is that if you have an egg carton that maybe you used <laughs> For dying eggs last week or just used regular eggs but mine is all colored because we dyed in it. Um, you can write things in the bottom that you would find out in nature and you could do a scavenger hunt. I totally stole this idea from my youngest daughter's school because we did this this week and my kids loved it. They thought it was so much fun. Um, so she has things like or there are things on here like finding a rock and then once you find a rock you just put it in there and then you keep hunting and see what else you can find so I have things like oh let's see a flower a leaf a walnut because we have a lot of walnut trees a pine cone an oak seed Ooh, windy again um, and then there's some that are just free spaces so you could put in whatever you can find you could put in some dandelions dirt twig feathers. When we dug up dirt to try to put our dirt in one, we ended up with some worms in that too because we have a lot of worms. So you can come up with some things that you can just find in your yard. Have your grown-up write it in the bottom of an, um, an old egg carton and then before you recycle the egg carton you can go ahead and fill it up with some nature stuff. See what you can find and then dump it back out and wash it out before you recycle. All right. I think that's all of my ideas for this week. I hope that you are able to get some fun outside time enjoying our earth. Um, even if you don't have a big space, one of my favorite years to garden, we just had a little patio and we grew, we grew corn on our patio. We were very weird neighbors, but it was lots of fun. My kids loved it. 
So you, no matter what size space you have, you can try to grow something. Check in with your grown up, see what they're willing to do. Um, one of my favorite songs and stories is Old Man Hatton Had Some Farms, and that's actually available on Hoopla. So if you have the Hoopla app, you can play that. That has all sorts of ideas if you don't have a big space as to what you can still grow and how you can still do things to help our earth. Uh, so I really enjoy that book. And let's see. I think that's it for today. All right. I hope that you have a fantastic day, that you are enjoying some outdoor time, if and if it's in your backyard or out on our metro parks and enjoying some outside spaces. Um, thank you for tuning into Storytime. Thank you to all of our workers who are helping us be able to stay at home. And oh, goodness, another burst of wind. So that's probably time for me to go. Bye. I miss you.